A very good morning to all the respected dignitaries. As uh, ma'am mentioned, my name is Ayush Mishra and I am working as an examiner of patents and design in Indian Patent Office, Kolkata. Today, I will be taking a session on intellectual property rights. Basically, I will be discussing about, in brief, about the IPR terminology. I will be discussing about the various aspects of IPR and how IPR is very much important in the progress of uh, the economy of our country. How IPR will be helping the new age startups, the, tech, uh, the various institutions like IITs and other scientific institutions so that not only when they are getting involved in the field of invention and innovation, they also need to have a very firm knowledge about IPR terminology because IPR is very much required for protection of their innovation or their publications or uh, various uh, SICLD designs that are coming into picture. So, not wasting much time, uh, let's begin. So, first, uh, before telling you about what are uh, inter what is intellectual property and what are intellectual property rights, we need to understand what is actually property. There are two types of properties, tangible properties and intangible properties. Tangible properties are those properties which can be touched or you can feel them. For example, uh, that mentioned in the slide like gold, car, house furniture, you can feel them. Physically, you can see them and can have a view of them. But there are certain, in there are the second category as the intangible properties, creation of minds or creation of human intellect. Like if you invent something, you have a prototype ready in front of you. But the, uh, the thing that the brain knowledge or the intellect that is required cannot be felt. It cannot be seen. So these type of uh, properties comes into the category of intangible properties. So basically these IPR are part of intangible properties. So there are six in, uh, intellectual property rights, patents, designs, trademarks, geographical indications, copyrights, SICLD designs. These six constitute to be the intellectual property rights. I will be discussing about all of them and as ma'am mentioned, uh, whatever questions are there, you can uh, simply type in the chat box and we will be discussing at the end of the session. So, I uh, will be talking about each of them in the upcoming slides. Before talking about them, I will be telling you, you are, as we all are surrounded by intellectual property rights around all the products that we are using. Here is a classic example where you can see this is an Apple laptop. This Apple laptop is, is consisting of all the IPs, like the LED display comes under the category of patent. Then the body of the laptop, the way it is curved, the way it has been chiseled, the way it has been designed comes under the category of design. Then the Apple sign, the half-eaten Apple logo by which we are identifying a laptop or by which we are differentiating an Apple laptop from a Samsung laptop, laptop or from a Dell laptop. It is coming under the category of trademark. Then the user manual in which the various instructions are written as to how you have to perform or how you have to operate the laptop comes under the category of copyright. Then the layout of ICs, the way the way the way the transistors are placed, the way the capacitors and the way various components are placed in the chips comes under the category of SICLDs. So you can see we are getting all the IPs in a single product. As I was talking about intangible and tangible properties, the ta uh, IPR comes in the category of intangible properties. So for the formation of a property, these three things are required. First of all, brain, resources and labor. First, we need to have an idea. First, there has to be a solution to a pre-existing problem. Then what we do is, we yes, we figure out that this is the problem or this is the idea that is coming to our mind. Then what we do, we assimilate or we collect all the sorts of resources, like what all resources will be required in order to solve the problem or in order to achieve that, in order to achieve that idea. Then we gather all the resources and after that, using that idea, using the uh, st statement of uh, uh, problem solutions and uh, using uh, the resources, we apply labor and the combination of all three results in a new and innovative product. So that that leads to the development of a property. And what IPR is doing? Basically protecting such type of properties. What as academicians or new age startups, what they do is they are involved in the field of innovation. They will be constantly involved in, new, in creating of new products. They will be investing a large amount of money in their research and development. They will be, they will be investing money and their profits and revenues in the development of new uh, new products or new publication so that they can dominate the market. So what all we are be doing this, we will be basically using all these things and uh, creating a property. And therefore, 
IPR will be required for protection of such types of properties. Now, a question will be coming like, what is the importance and significance of these, what uh, the uh, pro, uh, importance and significance of IPR? First, we need to protect. We do not want that my, uh, I as an individual will not be wanting that my innovation or my uh, creation is to be illegally used by some other guy or someone else is also claiming my invention or my publication. So what IPR is basically doing, it protects my property. It excludes others from using my property. So basically I am getting exclusive rights for my innovation. No one can copy, import or use my innovation without my permission. If I feel that yes, my innovation is very innovative and it has a potential market, then I can charge a nominal fees and I can allow others to use that invention so that I can so the so that the money which I have or the resources which I have, which I have invested in creation of my property is also now giving me hefty returns. So intellectual property rights uh, gives you the monopoly of the over the product that you are uh, using. For example, if I uh, if I give you an uh, example like the Apple phones which everyone is using, many of you might be using right now, the screen the, or the LED screen of that uh, laptop of that Apple uh, phone is actually patented by Samsung company. So Samsung company has what done? It has uh, first, it has created or invented such a screen, such a display. Then what uh, Samsung has done? It had applied for a patent. It had got, uh, now the Samsung is having the, the exclusive rights over the uh, display. And now Samsung is charging um, a fees from the Apple that if you want to use my screen in your phones or in your laptops or in your iPads, you can use it but you have to pay a certain amount of license fees so that even I can benefit from it. So you can see intellectual property is very much essential for protection of my product, for protection of my innovative products and designs. It excludes others from using my invention or my products and it is also helping me to utilize, commercialize and earn from my invention. So you, as I was talking about the utilization and commercialization, so own use, if you want that, if you don't want your, pro, uh, after getting uh, the IPR rights for your product, you can uh, use it uh, for yourself only. Uh, for example, if you don't want to commercialize that product or if you want to use for your purpose only, simply you can use it. Uh, like I was giving the example of uh, the display screen of uh, Samsung, they have licensed it. Uh, and you can assign others that they can use your product, franchise it and merchandise. Like uh, talking about franchising, these inventions or these products, when they come in the market, they help the company to build a brand value. Like you can see whenever you go to buy any mobile phone or laptops, generally we are concerned to two, three buyers only. Like we have Samsung or we have HP or we have Dell. Like while talking about laptops, we only stick to these three because they have their technology and innovations patented. They have their, uh, uh, they have their properties exclusively used for them only. And we, therefore this, Exclusiveness has led to brand buildup of these companies. Like we have Apple, like we have, like when now we talk about uh, uh, washing machines, we have uh, LG, we have uh, Whirlpool and Samsung. So these companies have now dominated the market because they are com they are using IPR rights for the protection of their inventions. So you can see IPR is very much important for the commercialization and utilization of the products that is being constantly made. And not only in the field of startups or companies, they are also IPR is very much important in the field of academics. Like when as a student or as a teacher, if I have uh, a particular publication for my name or if I have a product patented, then it also helps me in the upgradation in my resume. It Yes, that it also uh, brings a sense of pride that yes, I have a particular publication under my name or yes, 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 I am involved in the field of uh, uh, like VLSI or uh, such uh, innovative fields and I have particular papers published or uh, I have uh, exclusive rights over these publications. So it helps me in building up of my resume. It helps in uh, academic, it helps in also providing the benefits to the scholars and uh, academicians. Uh, someone has written in the chat box, the audio is not clear. Is the, is the audio clear? 
Can anyone confirm? Yes, it is clear. Okay, okay. okay. It is breaking. Okay, okay. So, uh, as I was talking about uh, the benefits. Of, uh, as, I was talking, uh, uh, as I was talking about the benefits of IPR, yeah, so it's a request to kindly, the participants kindly mute yourself because it's getting yeah. disturbed. Request all the participants to kindly mute in the PA. Dr. Shilpa, please mute yourself. So, okay, let's begin. So, as I was talking, uh, as I was talking about the benefits of IPR, you can see as a common person, you can see it brings a sense of pride. It helps me in academically. Now, when we talk about when we talk about businesses, it is bringing commercialization, brand value, and I'm getting a return over my investments that I have made in the field of research and development in the develop in the field of r and I have invested a certain amount. I have made a new product and now I'm getting a hefty amount of return from my investments. So now I'll be discussing about all the IPR one by one. Patents. What is a patent? Patent is a grant by a sovereign or a state to a person giving exclusive rights with IPR. Mind you, with IPR, this term exclusive rights comes along with it. So you are giving, you are getting exclusive rights for the innovation that you are getting to make. It gives exclusive rights to stop others from making, using, exercising, vending and importing your products. An invention, you get a patent for a limited period of time. That is for a period of certain time, you will be getting the monopoly. You will be getting the monopoly for all the product. What you as an innovator or inventor has to do, you have to disclose the invention to the patent office. Like in India, uh, when any a company or any, any foreign company applies for a patent, it has to disclose the complete specification or complete information about that invention to the Indian patent office. And if the patent office feels that yes, the innovation is inventive and it is worth patenting, so it has been, it is given a exclusive right which uh, comes under the category of patent to the inventor. So, what the inventor has to do? Inventor has to disclose the invention to the patent office and the patent office grants the patent to the inventor. So, after getting the grant or after getting the patent, it excludes, it, it basically gives the right to exclude others from using your invention. The owner has a qualified right to use the invention. Owner is now uh, the sole uh, uh, proprietor of the invention. He has his rights. He he can, uh, as I was telling in the previous slide, he can charge fees and can allow others also to go uh, to use his invention, or simply he can restrict any other person from using the invention. So it's upon the user. It's upon the inventor. He can use it in any other form. Now, uh, the, this is the famous inventors and invention, like in India, Mr. Jo uh, George Alfred D. Penning. He was the first person who was granted the patent in India. He invented an efficient pankha pulling machine. Uh, it was during the period of British uh, British period, but he was the first guy who was gr granted the patent in India. Uh, then we have various scientists like Mr. Thomas Alva Edison. He got it for phonograph. Alexander Graham Bell for telephone. Alexander Fleming for penicillin. So you see, these inventors have got uh, for the uh, they got patent for their inventions though they got it for a limited period of time but that period of time was uh, 20 years for like in india you get it period for a period of 20 years the period is uh, quite significant that you can earn a lot a large amount of money and you can use this invention in, in uh, capturing the market such that your invention comes into the market and you can easily earn or you can usually generate hefty amount of returns from your investment. Now, I'll be talking about famous, uh, like uh, this is, uh, you must have seen in cricket matches nowadays, the conventional stumps have been replaced by these LED stumps. So, there was a gentleman, Mr. Braun Teckerman, uh, he actually invented these LED stumps and he applied for a patent in Australia. This is EAU means Australia. He applied uh, in Australian Patent Office and he got the patent for it. Uh, these LED stumps, you must have seen that these LED stumps are nowadays used. They are very helpful uh, uh, for, they bring a very help to the uh, empires in order to distinguish whether a person is out or not out. So this gentleman, Mr. Braun Teckerman, he, was, he is actually the inventor also, director of Zinc International. This uh, Zinc International is creating the bales with LED lights. So as I was telling, the lights in the bales help the match officials make decision in the game over the dismissal of the batsman. So uh, this circuit diagram is basically is the idea behind the invention. Very simple invention. I will be telling you what he has done as an invention. It was very simple invention. What he has done is when uh, the, uh, the stumps, on the top of the stumps, he has simply placed light sensors. And what happens is when the ball hits the stumps, so the bales 
gets dislodged. So the bales floats in the air. And as bales floats in the air, the top of the stump gets exposed to light. And therefore, these light sensors react and they glow. So therefore, when these ball, when the ball hits the stump, they float in the air and simply uh, the light glows. This is the simple invention he has made. Then after realizing that yes, his inventor, this invention is innovative, is something new in the market, the Australian Patent Office has granted the patent. Now, in the upcoming slides, you will be seeing the magic after he has been given the IPR. I was, as I was talking about the commercialization and branding, you see a set of stumps and bales cost to be 25 lakhs. That means the total cost would be 50 lakhs per match. In a particular match, as we know, there are two pairs of stumps used. So, Mr. Eckerman's company is getting 50 lakh rupees for the match. Now, as I was talking about the branding, you can see ICC, Cricket Australia, Cricket South Africa, I, uh, the various IPL matches, they are uh, being, they are, they are using these LED stumps and therefore they are the official partners of Zing International. So, you can see when we are talking about LED stumps, only one name should come to our mind. This is Zinc International. So, therefore, you can see this innovation has led to brand buildup, power of IP. What uh, our former captain, Mr. MS, MS Dhoni, used to do uh, when India used to win the matches, he used to take a pair of stumps, he used to take a stump as a souvenir. But after the introduction of these LED stumps, Mr. Dhoni, Mr. Dhoni is not being to use uh, to uh, follow this uh, convention that he used to do because Ackerman is very strict about the fact that all the patented stumps are kept intact. That means after the end of the match, the stump, the used pair of stumps are returned, is returned back to the company, is returned back to Zinc International. And if you want to use uh, the stumps again, you have to reorder for the next match. That for every match, there is a new pair of stumps. So for every match, is the company is getting fifty lakh rupees. IP gives the IP gives the inventor the right to dictate his terms and condition. Simply after realizing that his innovation is inventive, his product is genuinely is uh, very much required by the market. What he has done, he has simply placed he, he has simply dictated his terms and conditions. He has, Mr. Eckerman's company has said that if you want to use my product, you have to pay me fifty lakh rupees. And after the end of the match, you have to return back the stumps. And for the next match, again, you have to reorder the stumps. So for a tournament, which generally consists of 50 to 60 matches, uh, like uh, IPL or uh, these uh, uh, world, they approximately have 50 to 60 matches. So for each match, Mr. Eckerman's, Mr. Eckerman's company is getting 50 lakh rupees. So you can see this is the power of IP. Not only these Australian companies, but also we have some Indian famous inventors. Like he is Mr. Gurtej Singh Sandhu. He is a record patent holder. He is an inventor in the field of VLSI and semiconductor device fabrication. He is recognized for being the all-time seventh most prolific inventor as measured by the number of US utility patents. He has more number of patents filed as compared to Mr. Thomas L. Edison. So, not only these companies, but also these Indian inventors are also involved in the field of innovation and invention. And this brings a great honor to uh, our country. He has approximately 1400 registered patents under his name. Now, not only we have such intellectuals, but also we have some young students. Like she is 8 year old Vashtali. She is a class 2 year student who has patented an inflatable flood shelter. She along with her family has patented their concept and have a mini prototype. Mind you, she is among the youngest patent holder in India. So, not only these big companies, not only such intellectuals like Mr. Sandhu, we also have such young talents in India which have to be identified. So, as she was, she along with her parents were involved, they recognized, they found a certain problem was existing in their area. They solved this problem. They found that their product was innovative. They applied for a patent and as the patent office also felt that yes, their invention was patentable. So, she was granted the patent. So, see, it is such a sense of pride like for an 8 year old to have a patent. Like I am 27 but I don't have a patent under my name. But imagine she being a class 2 student. She she has a patent certificate for her name. So, these are like famous inventions. These are simple famous inventions like augmented reality, money transfers, like uh, online transfer, like drone technologies. These are famous technologies and uh, they have been granted patent. Now, I'll be telling you about, uh, this is a video uh, about patents. Uh, where you will be getting to know that yes, if you are making a new product, you should be aware about the intellectual property rights.
तब फिर उनकी घड़ी में कमी बचती है अरे ये तो आविष्कार को बार का मैसेज है आ, मुझे तुरंत उसके बाद जाना होगा और आई पी रानी छोटू को फोन लगाया हेलो छोटू पहुँचना है अभी आए नानी नानी हम जा रहे हैं आविष्कार कुमार की लैब में वो यूनिवर्सिटी में मेरा फेवरेट स्टूडेंट रह चुका है साइंटिस्ट है मेरी बॉडी का घड़ी भी उसी की इन्वेंशन है तुमने बुलाया तो हमें भी पड़ेगा और ये मेरा नाती है छोटू जाओ नानी मेरा नाम आदित्य है छोटू नहीं हाय आदित्य हाय सर आविष्कार क्या इमरजेंसी है मैं आपको नए इन्वेंशन दिखाना चाहता हूँ मैंने क्या बनाया होगा हवा में उड़ती कार नहीं मैं रहूं, मैं रहूं। आ, कोई ऐसी मशीन जिससे हम गायब हो जाए बिल्कुल नहीं अब बहुत हो गया बताओ ना तुमने क्या मैंने किया है मैं मशीन क्या जी हाँ ये कार मशीन जिससे हम अतीत और भविष्य में आ जा सकते हैं आप बताओ कौन से साल में जाना चाहते हो मुझे 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 नानी का बचपन देखना है चलो चलो अरे ये तो मेरे घर के पीछे वाले मैं अरे वाह नानी आप बचपन से ही रॉकिंग हो अभी वापस ज्यादा होगा इसमें अभी ज्यादा फ्यूल नहीं है ये तो सचमुच बहुत ही ब्रिलियंट इन्वेंशन है अब तो सबसे पहले पेटेंट कर पेटेंट कराने में झंझट बहुत है मेरे पास तो इतना पेशेंस भी नहीं है अब मैं अपना काम करूंगा क्या पेटेंट ऑफिस के चक्कर लगाऊंगा अरे नहीं सर ये तो बहुत ही सिंपल है पता है मैंने एक जलेबी बनाने वाली मशीन का आविष्कार किया अभी कुछ दिन पहले ही मैंने डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट आई पी इंडिया डॉट एन आई सी डॉट इन पर जाकर पेटेंट फाइल किया है छोटू ठीक कह रहा है अब सरकार ने सारा प्रोसेस बहुत ही आसान कर दिया है तुम अपनी एप्लीकेशन ऑनलाइन भी फाइल कर सकते हो और तो और वीडियो कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग ऐसी हो जाएगी लेकिन जो सालों साल वेट करना पड़ता है उसका क्या ये बात बहुत पुरानी हो गई है आज की तारीख में भारत सरकार का प्रयास है कि अठारह महीनों में ही पेटेंट ग्रांट हो जाए उसके बाद कोई टेंशन नहीं कोई भी तुम्हारे इस आविष्कार को इस्तेमाल नहीं कर सकता हाँ अगर तुम चाहो तो तो एक फीस लेकर किसी को लाइसेंस कर सकते हो अपने आविष्कार को यूज करने के लिए ऐसा क्या मैं आज ही अपना पेटेंट फाइल करता हूँ अब देखता हूँ कौन मेरे इन्वेंशन को चोरी करता है भारत सरकार हमेशा आपके हक के लिए आपके साथ है अपनी बौद्धिक संपदा को सुरक्षित करने से आगे बढ़े सो मच टॉकिंग अबाउट पेटेंट नाउ आई बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द नेक्स्ट आई पी आर विच इज डिजाइन वॉट इज डिजाइन As the definition says, designs, features of shape, configuration, patterns, ornaments, or compositions of lines or colors. When changes are being brought about in any pre-existing article, mind you, the article is pre-existing, and you bring about any change in the pattern of the article, in the color, or in the shape, or in the configuration, such that the change which you are bringing about has been brought about by a chemical. manual mechanical process the change can be 2d the change can be 3d but such that the when the change is been brought about the finished article should be appealing to the eye when you basically judge simply judging by the eye and you feel that the change that you have brought about in the pre existing article is appealing then it is granted a design the intellectual property is called as design like uh, for patents we have a period of 20 years uh, 20 for the period of 20 years you enjoy your monopoly for the period of design it is for a period of 10 years but it can be extended to 15 years also like you can see this is a water bottle this water bottle is a pre existing article and what has been done changes have been brought about in the shape of the water bottle in the uh, opening of the in the, uh, the neck of the water bottle the base of the water bottle so these changes have been brought by a Um, chemical process or by a mechanical process or a uh, manual process in a 2D or a 3D. But when we see or when we judge by the eye, it feels appealing. So it has been granted the IPR under the category of designs. Like you can see, these are all the innovations or invent uh, innovations that are brought to the field of designing of a product. Like the wall clock, like the table lamp, like the inhaler. They are already pre-existing, but we have been bring. constantly bringing changes in the design of these articles like design of set of article set means 
a number of articles which are generally sold in a bunch or in a group like whenever we go to buy a pair of shoes we always we always talk about a pair we do not buy a single pair of a single shoe like when we uh, go to buy necklaces or uh, uh, necklaces we generally buy all these necklaces when we talk about utensils we generally buy them in sets so these are called as designs of sets of articles this is a typical certificate which is granted uh, by the patent office to the person who has applied for the design it where it is mentioned the period of design for that uh, for that period you will be getting the monopoly over the design this is the signature of uh, the cg or the patent of or the head of the patent office which grants the right to the owner of the design now i'll be talking about the next ip which is trademarks what is trademarks a trademark is any word name symbol or device which identifies and distinguishes the source of the goods or services of one trader from those of the other so as i was giving the example of uh, apple laptop when as i was telling when you go to the market to buy any pro, uh, buy any laptop simply by looking at the logo by looking at the apple logo or by looking at something logo you can see that yes this is an apple laptop and i am i am here to buy this laptop so these trademark or these logos or these symbols helps consumers to identify the identify the product it also helps the company to distinguish to get their product distinguished from other similar products existing in the market we have when you go to a market you can see there are laptops lying but how you can identify that this product is from apple or this product is from samsung simply by looking at the logo so this logo is also getting registered under the category of trademarks what is the functions and importance of trademark as an ip as a, as an ipr it provides exclusive monopoly over a class of goods or services the company enjoys the monopoly after getting means as i was telling the uh, example of these led stuffs zinc international is enjoying the monopoly over led stuffs simply by going on their website by looking at the logo zinc international you can see from the logo that yes the stuffs that i am getting are a genuine piece of stuffs so it gives the company a monopoly over a class of goods of a class of goods it allows the business entity to build public goodwill and brand reputation like uh, when i am interested in buying a phone i want to buy an iphone for example then when i'll be going to the market and identifying that phone from that logo so these logos and these symbols helps the company to build a public goodwill it helps or it assures the customers that they are getting the genuine product like it identifies the source of goods and services and it assures the customer about the quality of goods and services so the customer it gets assured that yes i am getting a product from a genuine source so not only about uh, these uh, uh, tech companies but we also have like uh, coca cola and pepsi like if you want to drink any soft drink you can identify from the logo that i am drinking a uh, coca cola brand or from a pepsi like when you are buying any pair of new shoes you can identify from the logo that it, it is from nike or adidas or reebok like if you want to eat a burger you can identify from the logo that whether you are eating it from mcdi or from uh, burger king so these logos generally is helpful for the company also for their brand builder it also is beneficial for we as customers to identify the products of these companies but generally what happens is uh, when new companies or new startup get registered they are not aware they are constantly looking and finding innovative names they are innovative names and logos they don't want that they should name their company after a pre existing company only but so how these companies or how these uh, startups identify or recognize that a particular piece of uh, logo or symbol has already been used or not so this symbol like when a symbol tn is written under a particular name or symbol that means that the application for that trademark is pending or it is unregistered but when a symbol r is written under a name you, it is identifying it is signifying that yes the logo has already been registered or has already been used by some other company so there is no point in copying or using that same symbol like as i was telling you the example you can as you can see very uh, minutely there is a written symbol r near adidas like uh, in mcdonalds also symbol r is written so that is helping the other companies to identify that yes this symbol has already been used so this r symbol is very much identifying um, is very much important for other companies to identify or uh, to distinguish the logos that have already been used by other pre existing companies now i'll be talking about the next ip which is copyrights copyrights is basically talking about the intellectual property of artistic that uh, of the users which are found in the field of artistic works like music like uh, cinematographic films like uh, 
applications like novel writing so this type of intangible properties also need to be protected by some ipr so copyright is basically the umbrella which is protecting all the kind of ipr all kind of uh, you know all kind of work that are involved in the field of creation or artistic use so it is basically a bundle of rights as i was talking it, it is a basically umbrella which is covering many aspects of uh, creation and artistic use it is giving automatic right and excludes the exclusive rights it given to the creators of original work of authorship it allows the owner to choose the way his or her copyrighted works are made available to the public like uh, for different for various ips we have different acts like for patent we have a patent act for design we have design act similarly for copyright we have a copyright act uh, which covers all the basic aspects that are uh, required for protection of artistic works now basically these are uh, uh, some copyrights like for literary work we have section 20 like for section 2c we have for artistic works for section 2h we have for dramatic works section 2p is for musical works section 2xx for is for sound recording works and cinematography films is for section 2f so you can see various aspects of creation or artistic views are covered under the copyright act now similarly we have uh, like for patent and designs we also have a period of where a period where uh, protection is provided to the artistic work like for cinematographic films it is 60 years from the date of publication for broadcast reproduction rights it is for 25 years and performance right is for 50 years uh, so what generally is there in copyrights of, uh, like i'll be giving you an example whenever a author or whenever whenever a novelist creates a new writes a new book what he does is he has used his creation or used his brain in crafting a new book then his property gets developed this is this this new novel or new book is a property then he is basically looking for protection of this property what he does is then he contacts a publication firm that publication firm what does is the publication firm takes a uh, uh, charge uh, matlab uh, gives a, a, a certain royalty to the author and gets the publication right of that novel for that publication firm so, and what the, the publication firm does it applies for a copyright for that invention for that uh, for that novel so what happens is uh, in order to use that uh, in order to publish that novel or in order to uh, sell that novel only that publication is having the rights so what happens is after as the sale progresses the publication gets benefited as the more and more number of copies get sold more and more number of money is paid back to the uh, author so you can see this is a win win case for everybody the author is getting a good amount of royalty the publication is getting as the well, publication is having exclusive right over that novel so and we as a user after uh, we as a user buy these books and enjoy these novels so you can see this copyright is very much important for the author itself also and for the publication firm also as the publication firm is getting exclusive rights over that novel so this copyright or this ipr is get is helping these uh, authors or these novels or uh, uh, these artistic work creators uh, to get inspired or get motivated to write more and more books and more and more innovation is brought about in such artistic fields also so uh, now i'll be talking about the next ip which is sicilds this is one of the latest uh, ipr which has been introduced uh, sicld and this as we know that we are now living in the age of fast changing technology more the mobile phones or the laptops the, or the tablets that are used that we are using are getting reduced the size is getting reduced day by day and so these uh, so these uh, components or these techno or these gadgets are using ics or integrated circuits these integrated circuits are basically a certain chips silicon chips on which various components like transistors and uh, capacitors and uh, inductors these are they are fabricated so more and more number of components are added on the chips the size of the chip is getting reduced and more and more number of uh, components are getting added so there needs to be an ip that is protecting the basic fabrication of these ics so therefore this problem led to the development of a new type of ipr which is sicld so semiconductor integrated circuit layout designs sicld is an important ipr for protection of products with fast changing technology such as electronic gadgets and computers the register like for a patent design also for sicld the registration of layout design is a period for of 10 years from the date of application filing and it is basically in india it is done in the indian patent office delhi the delhi patent office is basically dealing with all the applications that are filed in the field of sicld
So this is the basic ICs. As you can see, these chips are getting reduced in size, and more and more number of components are added. So the fabrication of these ICs also need to be protected by some form of IC, from some form of IPI. And basically, SICLD is dealing with all sorts of uh, IP products that are involved in the in the field of fabrication or chip fabrications. Now, talking about the last IP, which is geographical indication. Uh, first, before talking about geographical indications, I want you to have a very interactive video about geographical indications. Chindi Chor ke saath dhama saath ke baad, IP ki nani busy ho gayi. Ni koti ki shaadi ki tayyari ho gayi. Sangeet wale ne jab chhoto kunsi mila to, wow nani, aap to bilkul chhaye hue ho. आपके सामने तो मधुबाला को भी कॉम्प्लेक्स हो जाए ओके okay. बंद कर ये बता तुझे क्या चाहिए नानी आपने तो मेरा दिल ही तो दिया क्या सा अपने नानी को कॉम्प्लीमेंट भी नहीं दे सकता <laughs> अच्छा चल एक्सेप्ट किया तेरा कॉम्प्लीमेंट बता तुझे क्या चाहिए मुझे कुछ नहीं चाहिए बस आपके हाथ की वो स्पेशल वाली चाय की है इतनी सी बात के लिए बस का नहीं नानी आप सचमुच बहुत ही रॉकिंग लग रही हो ये साड़ी आप पर बहुत ही अच्छी लग रही हो अरे ये तो स्पेशल लखनवी चिकनकारी है लखनवी चिकनकारी पूरी दुनिया में मशहूर है ये अपनी खूबसूरत और बारीक एम्ब्रॉयडरी के काम के लिए फेमस है लेकिन पता है इसकी सबसे बड़ी खासियत क्या है ये रजिस्टर्ड जी है जी वो क्या होता है नानी जी आई का मतलब होता है जियोग्राफिकल इंडिकेशन हिंदी में जिसे भौगोलिक उपदर्शन कहते हैं ये किसी समुदाय का बौद्धिक अधिकार है वो विरासत जिन्हें प्रोटेक्ट और एनकरेज करने की बहुत आवश्यकता है मुख्यतः इन टाइप्स में रजिस्टर्ड होती है नेचुरल गुड्स मैन्युफैक्चर्ड गुड्स टेक्सटाइल्स चल अपना किचन में चलते हैं और गर्म गर्म चाय बनाते हैं छोटो जी नानी ये देख ये पेंटिंग देख ये मधुबनी पेंटिंग है बिहार की और ये है हिमाचल की कांगड़ा पेंटिंग है इन नानी को देश की कला और संस्कृति से जुड़ी हुई चीजों को इकट्ठा करने का बहुत शौक है अच्छा ये कटपुतिया देखा है ये राजस्थान की है इसी तरह छत्तीसगढ़ से बस्तर ढोकरा आंध्र प्रदेश से तिरुपति लड्डू असम से मूगा सिल्क नागालैंड से नागा मिर्च और मध्य प्रदेश के बाघ प्रिंट ये सब रजिस्टर्ड जी आई है हमारे देश की कला और संस्कृति का प्रतीक है हमारे देश में हुनर और कला का इतना भंडार है कि अभी से ही तीन सौ से ज्यादा रजिस्टर्ड जी आई है अब तो चाय बनाने में मेरी मदद कर एक बर्तन में पानी ले और उबालने के लिए रखता है छोटो तुझे मेरे हाथ की चाय इतनी पसंद क्यों है क्यों है मानी क्योंकि ये स्पेशल दार्जिलिंग की चाय है ये देश की सबसे पहली रजिस्टर्ड जी है जो 2004 में रजिस्टर्ड हुई थी लेकिन नानी एक बात बताओ इस जी आई ऐसी फायदा क्या होता है देखो छोटो ज्यादातर जी आई गाँव के समुदाय के होते हैं इनसे कारीगरों बुनकरों किसानों की आमदनी बढ़ती है उनको अपनी मेहनत का सही दाम मिलता है और उन वस्तुओं की डिमांड भी बढ़ती है साथ साथ खरीदने वालों को भी विश्वास हो जाता है कि वो एक जेनुअन चीज खरीद रहे हैं वैसे नानी मुझे एक आइडिया अरे हाँ छोटो तेरे को आइडिया Yes, नानी अगले महीने फॉरन से मेरे कुछ दोस्त आ रहे हैं क्यों ना मैं उन्हें हमारे देश के कुछ सुंदर जेल प्रोडक्ट्स गिफ्ट में दू ये तो बहुत ही अच्छा आइडिया है छोटू उन्हें ये चीजें जरूर पसंद आएंगी और हमारे देश की कला का नाम भी होगा देखा नानी आपकी संगत में मैं कितना इंटेलिजेंट हो गया हूँ भाई ये बात तो है <laughs> और इस तरह की बात आपकी नानी ने प्यार का झंडा so as the video was telling about geographical indications a geographical indication is an indication that identifies a product that have a specific geographical origin and possesses qualities or reputation that are due to that origin that means that particular product should be found only in that region it should not be present or should not be omnipresent or should not be found all over the country 
right? Like the Darjeeling tea it was talking about, like the Lucknow chicken curry work that was talked about. It, that particular uh, uh, property or that particular product is found only in that region. So if there is a particular product or if there is like the Tirupati Laddu as it was mentioning in the video, they are only found in that particular geographical region. Like the Laga Mirj, the Nagpuri Orange, they are specific to a particular geographical origin. And therefore, there is a need to identify these products. There is a need to uh, protect these uh, products so that they cannot be used by some other foreign entities or some other foreign companies can claim these products. So, geographical indication is basically protecting such products. Like the Darjeeling tea, as the mentioned, as it was mentioned in the video, uh, the first Indian product to be granted the GI protection, like the Makrana marble, then we have the Ratlanavi safe, the Kanchipuram silk, then uh, the Varli paintings, the paintings also <coughs> comes under the category of GI, like the Shahi Lichi of Bihar, the poor Gorin, someone has asked in the chat box about uh, that whether the food items can be uh, uh, protected or not. So, if that food item or of that, uh, like that, uh, like talking about the Shahi Lichi of Bihar, the atmospheric conditions of Bihar is very much required and it is only present in Bihar that touch, such type of atmospheric conditions are present or favorable for the growth of Shahi Lichi in that region of Muzaffarpur in Bihar only. So, therefore, these uh, lichis have been identified as a geographical indication. So, such food items like the Tirupati Laddu, it is only made in uh, Andhra Pradesh. So, these food items can also be protected under the category of GI. So, now you can see I have discussed about all the IPs. Now, there is a video about IP everywhere. You can see from the day, from the time you wake up and from the time you go back to sleep, you will be finding you are surrounded by IP uh, from day to uh, from day to night. You will be finding instruments or articles which will be telling that this is related to some form, some sort of IP. Now discussing about the various uh, uh, other factors, uh, other uh, aspects about the idea, like the validity, as I was telling about patents, it is for a period of 20 years. There is nothing called global or international patent. Mind you, if you apply for any intellectual property in India, you will be given the exclusive rights in the in the country of India only. That is, in India, no one can copy your product or use your invention. But uh, if uh, but if you have not applied for a patent in Australia or in USA, then that your then your invention can be used by uh, other companies outside. So what generally happens? happens is keep uh, whenever a company or whenever a startup or whenever uh, a new age startup is involved in the field of invention they identify potential markets when they find potential markets that yes they they in that country they can earn or their product will or in that particular country their product will sell they apply for uh, they apply for patent in that country also like whenever uh, samsung or these apple company the they first apply in uh, uh, their parent uh, the parent country and after that they apply in all other countries where they find there is a potential market so uh, for designs also it is for a period of 10 plus 5 years for trademarks for trademarks it is up to, up to subject to renewal for gi also it is subject to renewal and for copyrights it is for a period of 60 years plus the lifetime of author now who can apply for it any person or legal representative can apply for the ipr rights except for gi uh, anyone can apply for it. And as I was telling that all the IP rights are territorial in nature. There are certain points which I want you to remember that first protect then publish. First you need to file an application for the protection of your intellectual property. Then you need to publish your, uh, then you need to publish your invention or your work in public domain or in scientific journals. The rights are territorial in nature. Uh, registration in India by, is done by the government of India. The rights are for a limited period of time. Uh, the renewal fees, uh, renewal fees has to be paid for some IPRs, except for copyrights and trademarks, uh, trade secret. Now there are cer certain career opportunities also which is associated with the in the field of IPR, like government job. Like we both are working as exa examiner of patents and design. Then for we have also examiners of trademarks and GIs, examiner of copyrights, uh, like in 
now when we talking about private firms like you can work as a patent agent or trademark agent or a jrf sr in patent facilitation centers and if you want uh, other further further training uh, you can anytime contact rajiv gandhi national institute of intellectual property which is in nagpur rajin ipn this is the email id and website so thank you now i'll hand over the session to mr anna now we'll okay it's okay uh, so uh, now uh, we shall be addressing the q&a session okay i'm unmuting all the participants meanwhile we have got several questions here in the chat box which we will try to answer okay so uh, so how to patent in india and what procedure needs to be adopted so regarding the indian patent application you can visit our website ip india it is a government of india ministry of commerce so website okay so you can see all the necessary procedures as well as the faqs okay uh, regarding the patent filing application. applications so you can all uh, arrange that and the provision application i hope i am clear on that thing how to protect an idea okay so uh, regarding the protection of idea see idea is not an ipr please try to remember this thing okay an idea okay or any thought process whenever it is innovative your okay, money is your lapa it needs to be converted it needs to be converted yes. into a process or product or in the form of expressions using all the necessary resources then only it is called as intellectual property then that can be protected in the very yes uh, classifications like patents design trademarks or to share related documents you can visit the ip india website it is there only an idea cannot be protected because it is not any form of ipr procedure for filing trademark again it is uh, clearly mentioned in our website okay some forms need to be filed uh, and all can be filed through online mode only or in physical mode okay can we commercialize the technology before filing it can be okay but if it is published in any form of you know, no uh, in in any form it can be cited as a prior art while filing the patent okay so please you know try to remember uh, this thing okay if you are uh, commercializing this thing without the ipr protection then anybody can copy it okay because it is already in public domain okay so it, it should not be published in any source, um, form okay the next question is yeah institute logos can be protected under trademark we have a separate classification it you can apply for the institute logos okay so related documents yeah we have a detail brochure it will be shared with uh, first protect then publishes after having filed the patent application yeah definitely because see uh, the main uh, uh, you know uh, thing about ipr or about the patent in particular is filing date okay i all, all iprs are granted in india not not only in india in all over the world in using the first filing basis okay the person who have filed with a uh, subject matter earlier will definitely get a will get the right okay suppose you know uh, you have uh, filed using a say even a provisional specification where you have just provided a brief summary and uh, within a period of one year you have filed the uh, detailed complete specification but the filing date is secured okay so after that you can do anything because uh, if anything is published after the date of filing of the patent okay then it cannot be treated as a prior art or it cannot be cited to reject your application okay anything is published before that thing can be treated as a uh, prior how to make career in it okay uh, so we have provided all the career opportunities uh, just a brief overview okay two sectors are there one is government jobs and another is private job however a detailed discussions will be held in the tomorrow's lecture uh, which is based on ipr for startup ecosystem which is very recent trend in ipr that we are getting now as well as we will discuss all the career opportunities in detail you know point by point okay so it's better if you attend the tomorrow session any courses offered in this yeah yeah uh, rajiv gandhi national institute of intellectual property management which is located in nagpur okay it offers you know some uh, very basic as well as you know advanced courses about intellectual property right so those who are interested in pursuing a career in ipr okay like you know patent analysts or any uh, patent agents and all these things so in order to get a detailed knowledge okay they can enroll in any courses yeah certification courses are there okay that is you know some paid courses are there question mein this how this numbers you can you uh, know uh, just search okay it, it actually vary state wise generally this gis are maximum in, in maximum cases are filed by the state governments also also so, so the state governments do have got a repository on their own however the gi registry also we have got uh, the numbers and figures as well as the list of gis that has been found you can apply for gi no person because gi is not an you know individual thing okay it can be filed by any you know group or any authority like state governments the particular departments of the state governments or any you know uh, that or local community local community or any uh, 
or any uh, I mean uh, any institution representing that local community, they can file the geographical database. Patent search and drafting. Where do I get the training? Okay, these trainings, advanced trainings, are provided uh, in by the RCNIPM, Rajiv Gandhi National Institute, which is located at Nagpur. Okay, they conduct regular courses. You can just visit their website. Okay, IP India it is in IP India also. You can enroll in. It. Okay, so uh, regarding the fees, okay, uh, so it, uh, it depends on the category of applicants. If the applicant is a natural person or any group of individuals or any startup or any educational institutions okay or uh, any msmes like small entities they can uh, uh, file the patent application uh, with a minimum filing fee of 5600 okay and if they belong to other categories like uh, you know uh, you know, industries, corporate bodies, educational institutions can uh, you know also put in the first category. The minimum filing fee is 5,600, 1,600 for filing fees and 4,000 for request for examination. Okay, that is separate because uh, after you file the uh, patent using 1,600, it will get published after a specific period of time. But in order to get it proceed to the examination as well as in the disposal state, whether it can be grant or it can be refused. Okay, in order to proceed further, you need to file the request for examination that is form 18 with a prescribed fee of 4000 for ordinary amount 9 years if you have applied how long will it take it for the you need to take up this case okay you need you, you may file an rti okay uh, you know regarding these things okay why depending on this thing you may sort a response or if you, you may uh, put up a grievance in our uh, website ip india which is there fees for filing trademark 4000 rupees is there with the basic filing fees okay but the detailed filing fees and other uh, forms do we did that, that can be found in the ip india website how does it confirm it is an idea brought in the physical yeah uh, if the controller who is in charge of you know disposing the patent application wishes to you know see that model okay they may ask uh, you know uh, them uh, the applicant to or the agent who are representing them to show the model okay specific invention model okay they may ask for it we have that provision in our patent okay so i hope we have answered all the questions